In this video we're going to talk about what can affect the concentration of, of different types of ions. Remember concentration is different to the amount of ions. The amount would be just the number of ions or the number in grams, whereas concentration refers to how many of those uh, ions or grams of ions would be in any given area or volume, right? So for example, if you look at this actual container, this would have, let's say, four, so one, two, three, four actual um, pieces or particles of ion particles, whereas the same one over here has four as well. So obviously, the concentration on the one on the left would be higher than the one on the, on the right. The right one would be more dilute, the right, left one would be more concentrated, because it's the same amount, but in different types of volumes. Right? So we're talking about concentration, and we'll also be talking about ions. Remember, ions anything that's positively or negatively charged. For example, sodium, chlorine, uh, carbonate, magnesium, calcium, and aluminium ions. And these are all examples of ions we'll cover a bit in this video. So what we have to actually do for this video, or for this dot point, is identify, which means recognize or name, name factors that affect the concentration of a range of ions in solution in natural bodies of water, such as rivers and oceans. So we have to talk about what could actually affect the concentrations of certain ions in solution, um, and not solution, but in bodies of water, such as rivers and oceans. So for example, if let's say we have a river here, so this might be a river, and this is much, how much actual um, water there will be in this river before something happens, and there's two scenarios. Either we have heavy rainfall, so heavy rainfall would be scenario number one, or scenario number two would be that there would be high evaporation rates, which means a lot of water is lost quite quickly. So for example, in each of these, initially we have four particles, right? But if you have heavy rainfall, what that means is we have, all of a sudden we will have a lot more water, in that actual river, right? So we have more water, which means now the concentration of that actual ion, these four ions are meant to be the yellow dots, is going to be lower than it was beforehand, right? Because we've got more water, we have the same amount of ions, but we have more water, which means the concentration has gone down. So it has become more dilute. And so heavy rainfall can make the concentrations of ions more dilute. What does the opposite is high evaporation rates. Evaporation means the water will be lost due to evaporation. And that means we have less water. Right? So if we have less water, but we still have the same amount of ions because they won't evaporate. Ions don't evaporate as easily. So that means that we have a more the concentration goes up and we have a more concentrated version. Right? So these are two examples, two factors that can change the concentration of ions in a body of water such as river or ocean. So heavy rainfall would lower the concentration and high evaporations would increase the concentration. Another couple of examples would be the type of rock that is used. And what I mean is the type of rock of, of the ocean. So for example, beneath the ocean, what type of rock there is, or for example, in a river. So let's say this rock here, this is limestone, and there will obviously often be a river. So what I'm drawing here in blue is meant to be a river floating close to this rock, and they might be in contact with the rock, right? So for example, if this rock is limestone, which is calcium carbonate, so calcium CaCO3, calcium carbonate, then this calcium can actually dissolve because it's more soluble than maybe, say, granite. Some of the rock you can find sometimes is granite. This is less soluble than limestone. So here we can actually have that calcium um, separate from the carbonate and become Ca2+, and CO3 two minus, and this calcium has now been added to the water because it has dissolved. Before it was a part of the rock, but now it's going to be swimming in the water as the calcium ion. So therefore, the concentration of calcium ions in the water has increased because we have a more soluble rock such as limestone. So the type of rock can also increase the concentration of certain um, ions in solution, such as calcium. Another thing that can change the solution or the uh, concentration of different ions is the acidity of water because generally the more acidic the solution, the more minerals will also dissolve into its compartments, into its components, right? So one good example would be aluminium. So we have some rocks or some minerals that have aluminium inside of it, right? So we can imagine this rock or this mineral down here might be full of aluminium. It doesn't have only aluminium, but it has other things as well. But at the moment they're in a compound, so they're together. But then we have a, it becoming a bit more acidic, so the pH is going down. So what's going to happen is we've got more and more of these aluminium particles dissolving and becoming aluminium ions. So aluminium ions. 
now we've increased the concentration of aluminum ions in, let's say, a ocean, right? Because the pH has decreased, which has made the aluminum more easily dissolved from the mineral and has gone into the water and is a, now a aluminum ion. And we also have another factor that can lead to a change in the concentration would be aquatic animals, more specifically shelled animals. So what I mean by that would be, I mean, for example, your snails that can make a shell or a skeleton. Um, these shells themselves, shellfish, etc., etc. Anything that has a shell, the reason why they can change the concentration is because they actually need calcium or they need carbonate to make their shell, right? So you can imagine this, again, this is my nice attempt at drawing an actual snail. And you can see it has its shell on the back. So what's going to happen is you might have some actual um, calcium and carbonate floating around in the ocean. But what it's going to do is it's going to grab that calcium or carbonate and remove it from the ocean because it's going to use it to make its shell. Right? So these, what the shellfish do is they will increase, sorry, decrease the concentration. They make it more dilute. So they will decrease the concentration, which means they make it more dilute. In terms of certain ions, for example, calcium and carbonate, the reason being is because they will actually grab those different ions and, and use it to make their shell or their skeleton. Right? So aquatic animals, certain type of aquatic animals can, can decrease the concentration of certain type of ions, such as calcium and carbonate. Another example would be agriculture, more specifically the use of pesticides and fertilizers, because they can run off, which means they can basically um, be used here, but they can end up in the ocean, right? So the ones we're often talking about are phosphates, nitrates, and ammonium ions. These are all ions, phosphate ions, nitrate ions, and um, ammonium ions. Now they get used as either pesticides or fertilizer. Fertilizers are there to make the, the plants grow faster. So when you, what we mean by agriculture, it's, it's a more farm kind of area. So you can imagine you might have a tractor that uses these different types of fertilizers, and these fertilizers will make these crops grow. These yellow dots are meant to be maybe corn, right? They'll make it grow, but then there might be a bit of rain, and that rain will wash that actual fertilizer into a river or into the ocean. And that fertilizer will then all of a sudden be inside the ocean. So that means we can, agriculture can increase your phosphate, um, nitrate, and ammonium concentrations. So they will increase this concentration of these ions in rivers or oceans because it is runoff that has got, come from the farm and into the ocean. And we're going to talk about that in the next video because that can cause massive problems. Also, land clearing is also a problem because we'll have more landslides or erosions. And I'll go over why. Because, for example, when we have rain usually, so these green dots here are meant to be trees, right? When we have rain, the trees will, will absorb the rain, it will basically drink up the rain, right? Which means if it rains a bit, then those trees will absorb it and no problem at all, nothing happens. Whereas if we have removed, so land clearing means we have removed that, that forest, that means now if there's rain, it's going to not be drink, drunk up by the tree. And that means we're going to have more muddy areas, and muddy areas often lead to erosion and landslides, which means all of that actual dirt and mud will end up in the ocean or in the river. And that means we have more soil in the river, which leads to all these different types of ions, obviously sodium, and uh, chlorine ion would be examples, but all the different types of ions which would have been in the soil now end up in the actual river. So that's how we increase the concentrations of these in the river itself. Another example would be industrial waste. Right? So industrial waste, uh, often we talk about heavy metals here. So for example, lead and mercury. And I've realized this actually looks more like an elephant than an industry, but you meant this is meant to be looking like, an, like, a, like some sort of um, factory. Right? And this factory produces different types of heavy metals, such as lead and mercury. And a bit of it, not much of it, but a bit of it ends up in the ocean or in the rivers, close to it, often the rivers. So that means we have an increase in concentrations of lead and mercury, and that can cause massive problems for animals. And we'll talk about more of that in the next video as well. Right? So these were six of eight of the examples I gave. I'll quickly go over them again. So we can have heavy rainfall, which decreases the concentration, makes it more dilute. We can have a high evaporation rate, which increases the concentration, makes them more concentrated. We can have different types of rocks. If we have, for example, calcium carbonate, there'll be more calcium ions in, this, in the actual water because it's um, more soluble. It'll, it'll dissolve more and be in the actual rock, sorry, in the actual water. We can have acidity of water affecting it because more acidic means we have lower pH, and that means we have more minerals dissolving. So, for example, aluminum rock 
can turn into aluminium ions and they will be all over the ocean. We can have aquatic animals changing the concentration by actually absorbing a lot of the actual um, calcium and carbonate from, from around it to make it chill. So that means the concentration of those will go down. We can have agriculture, we can have runoff from phosphates and nitrates. They can be ending up in the river and oceans because we might have rain which washes them inside. That means the concentrations of phosphate, nitrates and ammonia would increase in the ocean and rivers. We can have land clearing which leads to soil erosion because water is, is not absorbed by trees anymore. That can lead to the actual soil ending up in the water and all those minerals and all those ions in the soil are now in the river or the ocean. And we can have industrial waste which is often made up of heavy metals which can end up in rivers and oceans and that could be lead and mercury and that would mean that the concentrations of those two would end up also in the ocean or river and that would increase those concentrations. I hope that was useful.